Hello, welcome back. In the previous segment, we discussed how to call XVE from a C function, like a main function calling XVE to spawn a shell. However, we noticed that machine code cannot be reused across multiple machines because the hard-coded address of bin SH is one problem. Not to mention that there were null bytes also on the machine code. If we were to use the machine code, we get from this portion of C code. Okay, so how do we directly write uh, XVE in assembly is the focus of this segment. In order to do that, we need to quickly uh, recall some basics. Okay, first of all, remember XVE system call requires EAX status to be 10. Okay, so let me write it this way. We would need EAX to be 11, EBX to be a pointer to bin as a string, okay? And ECX is array of pointers, right? Ending with null. So we need bunch of pointers, okay? And I'll explain what the pointers are in a moment, but end with null. The, the array must end with null, okay? That's the ECX. What about EDX? So in this case, EDX is simply null because we are not going to use the enrollment pointer. So this is the status of all the registers we would need in order to make a system call to XVE. Okay, so the trick we are going to do is as follows. First, we can push a null here to the stack. Uh, don't worry how null will be pushed. I will explain how to have null pushed without null, meaning we will do some small tricks like this, XR of EAX, EAX, right? which means EAX will be zero, and then we will push EAX. That means at the moment, EAX will be, at this point, EAX will be null. And we push null here at runtime, okay, on top of the stack. So we got that cleared. Why do we need to push null? We need to push null because bin SH should end with a null. Okay, that is the reason why we are pushing null. Now we need to push bin SH. So in order to do pushing bin as catch, we are going to convert bin as catch into a hex representation and reverse the string. Okay, let me write it here and explain to you. So we are going to have two push statements. The first push statement will push the number uh, six, eight in hex, seven, three, two F six E. And the second push statement will push Six nine six two two f two f. Okay, I will explain what is the meaning of this in a moment. Okay, so if you take all the eight bytes that I just wrote, right, and convert it into ASCII characters, okay, this is nothing but slash. This is slash. So what I wrote is essentially slash slash uh, b i n slash s h. Why did I put two slashes in the front? Remember, we don't want any null byte anywhere as part of the string. And putting a slash extra will make it eight bytes aligned, okay? And we already have a null byte pushed as part of this push EAX statement. So we do have now a perfect slash bin as such ending with null. So it's perfectly fine to put an extra slash at the, at the beginning because slash bin is anyway a root folder, right? So this is what we, have so far on the stack, okay? Now the stack pointer is going to point here, right? Because this is the recent push we did, okay? So what I'm going to do next is, so let me write it here. So I have my stack pointer pointing here, that's the ESP. And remember EBX should also point to the place where bin as is stored. So all I have to do now is just create an extra instruction, right? So while I'm doing this, let me also write the um, assembly code. What I'm going to do, I already did the push 68732F6E. That is the first push statement. It's all in hex, by the way. I'm just writing it informally. No, no need to worry about the syntax per se. It's 2F, 2F. Why did we write it like this? Um, the reason is that the least significant byte occurs at the lowest address, and that is the reason why we write it in the reverse. Okay, this is slash slash B I N slash 
Yes, H. So we are done with that part. Now, remember the next expectation is that EBX should point to the place where bin SH is. Okay, that means I can do simply move ESP to EBX. Okay, which means that EBX now points to the place where bin SH string is stored. So we are done with that. All right. The next thing we need to do is uh, we need to have EDX to be null. Okay. And ECX should point to the array of pointers that end with null. Okay, those are the two, two things we need to do. So what if I just push EDX now? Uh, EDX has to be uh, set to zero. How do I do that? Remember, EAX is already zero. So all I can do is I can do use the CLT instruction, which will automatically take the EAX and copy to EDX. So uh, meaning the most significant bit of EAX will be repeated 32 times. Since EAX is already zero, EDX will become zero because of CLT. So EDX is zero at this moment. And now I push EDX, okay, onto the stack. So what will happen now? So EDX will be pushed to the stack. So the stack would have zero here. At runtime, it will be zero, zero. All the four bytes will be zero at, at runtime, okay? When you look at the assembly, you will not see null. You will just see zero, zero, zero everywhere. Okay, EDX to the stack. EDX is now a null because I just did CLT. EDX is also pushed. Okay, what is the next thing we need to do? We need to uh, make sure ECX points to an array of pointers that end with null. Okay, ECX must point with array of pointers that end with null. Okay. All I can do now is, okay, well, where is the ESP now? Because of the push EDX, the ESP is now pointing to this location, right? Because I just did a push EDX. So the ESP is pointing here. What is the next statement we need to do? I forgot one instruction. Yeah, no, I have it here. EBX is already taken care. All right. So the next thing we need to do is making sure that ECX is pointing to array of pointers that end with null. Okay, so all I can do is just, okay. I need my ECX to point to array of pointers that end with null. What if I just did push EBX? Okay. Remember EBX points to also slash bin SH because of the move ESP to EBX statement. And now EBX is also pushed onto the stack. So what is on the top of the stack? Stop, top of the stack is EBX. Okay. All right, let me write it here also. Top of the stack is EBX. So EBX is here. Okay. So ESP is now pointing here. All right. What is what is the next thing I need to do? Suppose I the next instruction is simple. All I have to do is just move ESP to ECX. Okay. Why do we need that? We need that because ESP is pointing to the place which contains EBX, okay? Therefore, if I say move EB, ESP to ECX, ECX also now points to EBX, okay? So because of this last move statement, my ECX also points to the same location that contains ECX, uh, EBX, okay? So ECX points to the location that contains EBX. All right. And uh, all we need is ECX pointing to array of pointers that end with null. Do we have that condition satisfied? Yes, ECX points to EBX, which is the first pointer. And the pointer ends with a null because of the null statement here. The array of pointers ending with null. So we got the ECX ready. We already set EDX to zero because of the CLT statement. And we took care of that. EBX points to the place where bin SH is. Yes, that's because of this move statement, move ESP to EBX. So now we have everything ready. We just have to set EAX to 11, which is simple. Okay, how do we do that? We can easily say move B, okay, byte uh, B, B means 11 to AX, the, even we can put AL the least significant byte of EAX will be changed. And then we can just uh, call the interrupt. 
uh, 80, which will call the system command for XV call. Okay. To summarize, our goal is to have EAX to be 11, EBX pointing to bin as a string, ECX point to array of pointers that end with null, EDX is equal to null. These are the four things we need to have at the end of the shell code. How did we achieve that? We first um, handle the null byte problem by using XR of EAX with EAX and push EAX. That means EAX will be null. Okay, and we push the EAX to the stack. Okay, and then we push the two numbers, 6873, 2F6E, 6962F, 2F, to essentially push slash bin slash SH. Okay, and then we moved ESP to EBX because EBX points to the place which has the slash bin SH. And we use the CLT instruction to make EDX also zero because EAX is zero. Okay, we push EDX to the, to the stack. The reason is that the syscall for XVE expect ECX to end with a null. That is the reason why we are pushing EDX. And then we are pushing EBX also to the, to the stack. So EBX contains uh, address that points to bin sketch, which is exactly the requirement for ECX. ECX should contain an array of pointers, right? And that is the reason why we are pushing um, EBX. Okay, and then we move ESP to ECX because ECX now will point to EBX, uh, which, con which contains the bin sketch uh, address. And it will also have uh, a null terminator array because we pushed the uh, EDX as part of the push EDX statement. Okay, so essentially that is the assembly code uh, we, we need to write to get rid of hard coded address problem and null byte problem. Okay, now let me show you the assembly code in a more formal way. This is just an informal syntax to get the idea across. So here is your assembly code. As I explained on my whiteboard, I first do XR of EAX, EAX, and push EAX, okay? That means at this point, right, what you have is on top of the stack, EAX is zero. And then we push this two, these two strings to handle slash slash bin as such. Okay, and the EBX is now pointing to the place that contains, okay, EBX points to bin as such. Okay, EBX has a number and that number contains bin as such. EBX is a register that points to a stack location that contains bin as such. Okay, and CLD means, uh, essentially take the most significant bit of EAX and extend it. So at the moment, EDX is also zero and we push zero on top of the stack. Okay, the reason being that ECX, the second argument should end with a null. That is the reason why we are pushing EDX and the EBX is also pushed. Uh, okay, the reason why we push is that, remember the next statement, ECX is copy of ESP. So ECX ends with an array of pointers with null, and that null is EDX, okay. And then we make a system call by making EAX to be just number 11, right? This is nothing but EAX being 11. So with these tricks, right, we are avoiding null byte, and I'll show you, if we compile this and study it, we can just look at the object dump for a moment and disassemble it. You can see the machine code has no null, there are no zero zeros, right? That's good. And there is no hard coded address anywhere here. Okay, remember this is not a address. This is just, if you interpret this as a string, it'll be slash slash bin as such. Okay. So, and it comes reverse here because this is little Indian, right? This, this 68 is pushed, the 68 is pushed naturally. Okay, the most significant byte is 69. Right, and that's the reason why you have 16 here. The least significant byte is 2f, which is this is this 2f. Okay, so this is slash slash b i n slash s h. Okay, all right, so that's essentially it. Uh, we are pushing the constants which are bin as h. 
And uh, remember for the syscall to XVE, I will write it again. We would need, we need EX to be 11, EBX to be a pointer to bin as H. ECX is array of pointers, but you end with null. The array should end with null, okay? Ending with null. And EDX is null in our case because we don't care so much about the environment variables for this particular bin as H script. Okay, so we got the EDX to be null because of the CLD statement. And why are we pushing EDX? We are pushing EDX because of ECX requirement. ECX must end with a null. And then we push the EBX because we want the ECX to point to the place which contains EBX, okay? And then the rest is the last two lines are just setting the EAX to be 11 and calling the sys function, okay? That's basically it. This is how you would uh, create a shell code which is free of null bytes free of hardcoded addresses. By the way, uh, this is just a basic shell code. There may be a more advanced shell code which takes less number of bytes than uh, the bytes that I have put in the box, like all the way from 31C0 to 80 is the shell code. And uh, some folks work on more advanced shell coding tricks to overcome intrusion detection systems, right? Okay. For example, intrusion detection system may look for CD80 and stop your payload. So you need to come up with clever ways to encode it to achieve the same goal of spawning a shell. All right, that's basically it. Thank you very much for your attention.